Today, we're going to make a responsive nav bar. And to be completely honest with you, I wasn't even going to record this tutorial until somebody in the last video dropped it as a comment requesting this. It wasn't even on my radar, to be honest with you. Now, I have a theory. My theory is you don't necessarily want to see me just type out everything line by line. Instead, what you would probably want me to do is actually walk through the finished code so you can understand the concepts and see what's going on. Maybe it'd be even be an easier time for you to kind of copy the code along yourself just so that way you can probably avoid less syntax errors. Now, I'm going to do that for this video. I would really like for you to kind of compare the teaching style of this video with the last one and let me know which works best for you. Because if majority ends up saying they like the other teaching style better, I may re-record this tutorial again in that style. Or if you like this style better, this may be the path that I end up taking for a lot of future videos as well. But my biggest concern isn't necessarily the retention rates or how long you watch this. My concern is, are you actually absorbing the information that I'm sharing with you? So please, I'm going to allow you to be the voice to kind of guide me in this direction, but I really need your input here. So maybe check out the last tutorial. I have a link in the description to kind of make it easy for you to kind of compare the two styles, but please let me know what works best for you in this regard. So I don't want to waste any more time. Let's get to the code. So this is what our project is going to look like. So I try to add more than just the responsive nav bar because I'm a very big believer in real life scenarios and kind of understanding and kind of thinking of bigger ideas besides just a responsive nav bar. So you can kind of see here that I've named this Danny shop and we have our home. We have some hover state which changes the direction of the button. So we're going to use some like unique styling when it comes towards the border area that maybe makes you think about something kind of also transforms the position of this a little bit kind of, you know, moving it up just a little bit so that the user knows that they're kind of hovering over the item. If you click on it, it'll keep that state to let the user know what page that they're on. So now as we go from our desktop site down to our mobile page and I click on that, you see the drop down come down from there. It'll hold the page when we click on it as well. So everything is responsive. It looks good. It works well together. Let's start writing some code. You're going to need one extension for this. You're going to need live server so that way you can kind of compare what this looks like in real time as you're making these changes with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. If you don't know where to get that, you can kind of get that from this extension store here. Go to live server or you can use the live preview, either one. I prefer live server because I don't want it to be inside my Visual Studio code. I want it to be out there, but you can use whatever you want. As long as you can see what needs to happen, everything works. So one of the first things that we need to do, obviously, is to make an index.html page. So let's go ahead and start a new file here. We'll call this index.html. You're going to use an exclamation point enter and it gives us the boilerplate text that we're going to require to start our HTML code. Now let's go ahead and call this navbar fly out so that way we, you know we kind of know what we're doing here and that's going to be all we need in the head right now so now we're going to go and start working on the body for the responsive nav bar here so first thing that we're going to go ahead and do here we're going to add our navigation tag so obviously we're going to use semantic html here to kind of section things out the way that we need them to so we're starting with our nav tag here if we reference the original site that we had in the beginning we had danny shop on the left side of the screen and then we had all our links on the right side of the screen so to distinguish this i'm going to do a nav left to kind of keep the name on the left side and i'll do a nav right to keep the names on the other side. And then from here, you can kind of see that I've added my name. And so I'm adding a class here, a class of name, and I'm writing Danny shop. You can write whatever it is that you like on there. And inside the nav, right, I'm going to have an unordered list. And inside this unordered list, we're going to have several links, like the home link, for example, the shop with us link, the find a location. So maybe we have multiple locations that they can kind of go to a contact us page. So that way it have our contact information, maybe even a contact form where they can send us an email. After that, now I'm thinking more about the mobile situation. So I know I want to have a hamburger icon on the right side. So I want to have three empty divs that I can stylize with that later on. Outside of the navigation, I'd like to have a couple additional things to kind of give structure to the page and make it feel more real for me. You don't have to do this. I just want to do this for the end product. It's completely up to you. So you kind of see here, this is the image that I'm utilizing. I pulled this image off of Google Images. I have the exact link for you to utilize as well if you want to. Very simple link that I just took off of a blog article just for demonstration purposes. So now that I know that I'm going to add some main text, let's go ahead and add a main tag here. If you want more tutorials like this, drop a like on this video. It lets me know that I'm doing the right thing. Inside this main tag, I want to have an image, which would represent the store here. Of course, I have some alt text here, of course. Very good habit to have alt text. Uh, I'm going to add this as storefront. And the, as you can see, the, the image is right here. I didn't place it in an additional folder just for easy purposes here, since it's not going to really be a main portion of whatever project that you're utilizing. Inside here, I have my text of main class here that I'm utilizing. And then inside this div, I have a class that I'm representing as text block. This way I can distinguish between multiple columns. I'm just going to have some regular lorem ipsum text here. So I have my title, which is a heading of H1. There's multiple headings between H1 and H6, H1 being the largest font. I'm utilizing that here. 
I'm adding some paragraphs of just lorem ipsum text so that way I can have multiple paragraphs here. I'll do one, two, and now three. And since I already have this text here, I'll just go ahead and copy it and paste it one more time so that way I can have this entire section of text here. And that is everything that I need for my HTML page. So now let's check out what this looks like. So I'll right click and hit open, li open with live server. You can see here this image is way too big at this current moment, but we have our nav left, which is our name here. We have our unordered list on our nav right showcasing the links. Obviously we need to stylize it so that way it can look something more representative of what this is at this current time. So now let's go ahead and create a new page that will be style.css. And then now that we've created that, before we start writing a line of code, let's go to the top here and let's go ahead and type in link, go to the one that says CSS and it will now link your CSS sheet. Now this just follows normal naming conventions. Style.css is pretty much the average thing that you'd find as like an initial style sheet. So it's naming that, but you can name it whatever you want. Just put that name there. One of the most common mistakes a lot of beginners make is forgetting to link their style sheet. So hopefully this will help you prevent that mistake right there. So now let's go to our CSS. So now let's add some global styling for pretty much the entire page. I like to have this just to kind of avoid some issues most of the time. So first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and represent the exact global stylings that I'll be utilizing here. I'm gonna go ahead and add a padding of zero to the entire page. I'm gonna add a margin of zero as well. I'm gonna add a border box for box sizing. Text decoration, none. I don't want any decorations whatsoever. List style, I want none as well. And the font family, I'm gonna go ahead and utilize sans serif. Now you can utilize whatever font you like, but this is you know what I'm going for. I wanna go ahead and hit my name class. So if you go back here, you can kind of see here, we have Danny's shop and it's represented by the class of name. So I have this period here marking this is name. I want this color. Now this is a kind of blue that I've chosen. You can choose whatever you like. Font size two rem. Now I'm specifying a font size of two rem. Now what does that mean? The font size is in relation to whatever the default size is that we have. So in most cases, it'll be 16 pixels unless you specify as otherwise. So 16 times two, this will represent 32 pixels for the font size. Two rem is 32 pixels, but I don't like to use fixed values. I'd like it to be in relation. So maybe later on down the road, I change what those default values will be and it would work in relation to that. Maybe I want it to be 10 pixels. So now this would represent 20 pixels instead of 32. Now I wanna start hitting this navigation bar. I'm setting a height of 70 pixels for this navigation bar. I'm utilizing Flexbox for this because Flexbox is gonna make this super easy to kind of keep things going. So I'm utilizing a display of flex. I'm aligning my items in the center of that and I'm justifying my content utilizing the space between feature. So now it's utilizing the space in between the sides instead of pushing it all the way to the ends. I want a padding of 30 pixels all around so it's not just the sides but top, bottom, left and right. I want my background color to be a darker blue so that way it kind of stands out from the lighter blue that I'm utilizing for name. And I want my Z index to be two. Now what is Z index? Z index represents the, uh, the order of where I'm placing my units. The default value for Z indexes on elements is zero. So if everything is zero and I represent something as one, that means it goes in the order of laying on top of each other. So if something has a representative value of one, it would be on top of anything that has a representative value of zero. Well, if something has a value of two, it would be on top of one, which is then on top of zero. Now I could even do negative values of minus one. So that would go underneath anything that has a default value of zero and so on and so forth. I know that this navigation bar needs to be on top of everything that's gonna be there. So I want the Z index to be a two here. So if I save this now, you can now see that we have our nav left icon here. We have that blue that we've selected. We have the dark blue here for the back and we have all of our UL items, our unordered list of links all now pushed to the right side of the screen. So our nav left and nav right is kind of working here together, but we haven't done anything specific as of yet. And you may have been saying, you know, I utilize that text area there. What are we utilizing here? So I put that text under text main. And in text main, I'm gonna have a margin of 100 pixels, so I'm margining all the sides. I want it to be pushed in. I want that text aligned to be centered, so I want all the text to be centered on the page. And I want that display of flex, because we're utilizing Flexbox again here, since we have multiple you know, divs, so we can kind of utilize that here, might make the columns. And I want my flex direction to be a row instead of column, so I want it to be side by side. I want to justify the content to the center of the page and I want to align those items to the center page as well. And I want to add a gap of 40 pixels. That gap will separate the two columns. So now when I save that and compare, coming back here, you can kind of see here, we now have our text here. We have our you know, extra divs. We have our gap of 40 in between the two and now there are two columns. And so if I were to take this out, 
and kind of compare that so you can see the difference. So this is the original form of the text, right? Versus what this alters this to now. So now we need to start hitting those links, right? So let's go ahead and do our nav links because if we come back here, you can kind of see we have our nav right, but it's unordered list of navigation links. I want to use Flexbox once again. So display flex. I want to align the items to the end of it. So I'm using my flex end. And so now I want to go ahead and start working on this image container. I want to go ahead and make sure that our image is looking great. So I'm using a background image of no repeat, a cover, and a center center to make sure that's covering the entire center section. And I'm using the URL of the image here. So now when I save that and I come back with our height of 100 view height, meaning I want it to take up 100% of the view height that we have there and our width of 100% of that area, I now save it and come back and you can kind of see here that it is no longer this massive image that we didn't have anything to do with. It's now looking right. And if I go ahead and switch this now to our mobile view, we can kind of see it's still taking up the entire space the way that we kind of want it to. Perfect. Now I want to go ahead and focus on the actual links within those nav links, so the anchor tag. So I'm going to go ahead and press class of nav links. And then as I add extra items, it's saying further in, further in, right? So now I want the class of nav links. I want it to go to the list item and then I want to hit our anchor tag. So you can kind of see here how it specifies our selector specificity. We have our element class of nav links, list items, and inside that the anchor tag itself. I want the color to be the same blue that I have for my logo link. I want my font size to be 1.1 rem. So if you remember one rem is 16 pixels in this case. And so I want it to be slightly larger than that. So I'm hitting roughly like 18 pixels. I want my margin to be five pixels on the top and the bottom. And I want it to be 10 pixels on each side to give it a little bit of space in between each link. So now when I save that and come back and compare that to our layout here, you can now see there's a little bit of space. It's no longer purple links. There's no more bullet points between each one. But we're missing one of my favorite things, hover links. I love hover effects. I love active effects. So I want to go ahead and add that in here. So now I want to go ahead and hit my class of nav links. I want to hit the exact same thing of the list item and the anchor tag, but I want to focus on what happens when my mouse hovers over it. But I also know I would like to keep track of what happens when a link is clicked and it's now in an active state. So instead of just doing this, I will add a comma and then add the active state there as well. I want my color to be white. So FFF. I want my padding to be zero on the top, five pixels on the right. I want it to be two pixels on the bottom and then zero on the left. So kind of elevating it slightly up. I want to add a border right to be two pixels solid and white and a border bottom now to be the exact same thing as well to kind of give that backwards L effect. So when I save that and kind of come back here, so when I save that and come back here, you now see when I hover over it, we have that little effect there. And if I click on it, nothing happens yet because we need to start doing something with that when it comes to JavaScript, which we'll do in a moment. So now I want to focus slightly on what that hamburger menu is even going to look like, right? So I go ahead and drop our class of hamburger. I want my margin left to be 20 pixels. I want a cursor to be pointer, meaning if I'm using my mouse, I want to see that pointer come up. I want the display right now to be none, meaning if we're in this original state, we will not see this at all. But when we start using media queries, we can change that display. So now I want to go and focus on the three divs that we have. So we're doing our hamburger class and inside of that, we're hitting on the divs. I want the width to be 30 pixels. So they're going to be 30 pixels each, the height to be two pixels. So not long. I want the margin there and I want the background or the color to be white in this case. So to kind of show this, so you have a reference point, if I go to the mobile size in this application right now, the links are kind of all over the place. That needs work. We're going to be utilizing that in a moment, but you don't see any hamburger menu, even though it's there. So we're going to utilize media queries to kind of start making that pop up. First thing I want to do is go ahead and hit my media only, the screen size, and I want my max width to be 768 pixels. Meaning if this exceeds 768 pixels, we want the default desktop views to be shown. But if it's underneath that max width, then we'll see our mobile stylings. And so from here, we have our hamburger class and now we change the display to block. So if I go ahead and save that and come back, you now see that there's two lines there. The third line is basically hidden at the moment, but we have our lines now being shown. So now let's go ahead and start focusing on our nav bar and our image container so that way it can be responsive as well. So I'll hit my nav again. I have my position of relative. I have my padding as top and bottom, zero and 20 pixels for the sides. And a Z index of two. So if you remember Z index earlier, this should make sense. Now I'm focusing on my image container. I'm using the same background image again. I'm using a height of auto 
and I'm using a width of 100 pixels, and now my Z index is minus two because I want this to go behind completely everything that will be coming in front of it. Now I go back and save this, and as you can see now, the image has gone to the back. Our third hamburger line, which was being hidden by the image container, is now visible, and it's now kind of formatted or at least being shown in a way that showcases well on mobile. Go ahead and hit this nav bar and make these links look exactly the way that we want them to. So let's focus on our nav links and we're doing a margin of zero. We're doing a position of fixed. We're doing a display of flex, bring a flex box back into this. And we want the direction to be column this time. And I wanna align the items at center and I wanna justify the content spaced evenly. And I want a gap of 20 pixels. So I have my height as auto and I want my top to be minus 250%, meaning Right now, I want to completely hide my nav links above whatever anybody can see right now. It wants to be hidden because I want this to drop down. I want my left to be zero. I want my width to be 100%. I want my padding to be 30 pixels. I want my transition, because I want to transition this down, to be 0 0.3 seconds long. While I was editing this, I realized I completely skipped the part of explaining how navlinks.active works. So we have an opacity here that we've adjusted to 0 0.7. We have a top of 70 pixels, meaning that's where I want my nav bar to go with the links. And I have the background color bringing that dark blue. So now we're gonna go ahead and hit the list items within the nav links. We're gonna do a display of blocks so that way it's visible. We're gonna do text align of center. I want the color to match, obviously, the blue that we've been using this whole time. A font size of 1.3 rem, so a little bit larger. Margin, of course, we want margin on the top and the bottom since this is gonna be a column instead of horizontal. I want my padding to be all around. I want my transition to be there as well. And now I wanna focus on the main text, lower the font size a little bit below the 16 rem. I'll save that and come back, and you can kinda now see that this font text is a little bit lower. So now, in order for this to start working, we need JavaScript to be there. So let's go ahead and start a JavaScript page. So I'll do app.js, and before I start writing any JavaScript code, we must link it to the front. So let's go to the bottom of our body, and inside the body, we wanna do script.source, and we'll name this app.js. Now our JavaScript page is connected, so when we start writing JavaScript, it will work. So let's go ahead and start writing our JavaScript code here. We wanna go ahead and get our values from the front. For our hamburger, we wanna make sure that we're doing our query selector for our class of hamburger. For our nav links, we wanna go ahead and do our query selector for all the nav links. And for our nav link items, we wanna do a query selector of all for our a tags within the nav links. And so we're gonna go create an array from this. Now for our hamburger, I wanna add an event listener and that event listener will be a click. And when a click happens, I want this arrow function to perform. And so from there, we're gonna do our nav links. We're gonna add a class list and we're gonna to toggle it of active. So when it's clicked, it is now in an active state. So now referencing this array at the top, nav link items, we're gonna do a for each instead of a for loops because we don't necessarily know how many are gonna be in there. Maybe we have four links, maybe we have five links, et cetera, et cetera, whatever it may be. But we're gonna do a for each of this and each link that gets passed through in this arrow function. I wanna go ahead and use a add event listener for each link and it's gonna be a click and there's gonna be an event that takes place. And as this event is taking place, we wanna go ahead and prevent the default actions and we want our actions to take place instead. And we're doing another for each with this and we're going to remove the active status from any of those links. And now we're gonna add the active status only on the link that we want. So that means if there's a previous active status on a link and we click on another one, we want to remove the previous one and we wanna add the new one of where it is, wherever it is that we clicked on. So if we come back here now, and we bring this back here, you can kind of see that if I click on any of them, the active status stays and the previous one is now removed. But the important one is, let's check out our nav bar. So if I click on this, boom, we've got it dropping down from the top. We have the opacity, which we may want to tweak here. And we'll change this now from a 0 0.7 to a 0 0.9, let's say, and see how that looks. And that's better. So it's a little bit darker, very visible. Everything looks great there. And that is your responsive nav bar. So if I go here and click, everything is working, everything is looking good, we have our columns there. If I go back to mobile menu, we have our drop down. we have our images, we can scroll, we have the two columns there as well, and we have this drop down happening each time. Looking good. There's one extra problem that I'm noticing here, right? So as this is going up, it kind of goes over our logos and everything. It doesn't have a super clean look. We can take this a little bit of a step further and with our transition, we can actually go ahead and add in an ease in situation, right? So let's go ahead and add in an ease in real fast. Ease in and out. 
And so now if I do that and come back here, it's still kind of passing over that. So one thing we can do this, we can take this one step further. So since we're gonna take this one step further, let's make our own keyframe here to utilize. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna add at keyframes and we're gonna name this slide down. We're gonna make the at 0%, meaning the initial stage of this, at 0%, we're gonna have our top at 250% negative value, meaning it's gonna be above what we can see. The opacity will be zero. So that means it's starting completely transparent. At the 50% mark, I want it to be at the top of zero and the opacity is just slightly showing at the 75% mark now. So now we've gone three fourths of the way. I want it to be past the 20 pixel mark up for the top. I want half opacity to be visible. And at the 100% mark, I want the top to be 70 pixels exactly where we want it to be and the opacity to be completely visible. And now when I save that and come back, Oh, and when I save that and come back and do this, we still see this. And that's because we didn't add the keyframe here. So let's go ahead and add this keyframe, removing the ease in and out. And now we'll call this slide dash down, save it. And now when we come back, you no longer have it going above it. It's now dropping from here. On the mobile menu, everything is looking right. But now if we look back at the desktop menu to compare, everything is looking great. Now that is a responsive nav bar. Let me know how this tutorial went for you. Let me know if this went well, if you'd like to see more like this, or if you'd like to see it in a different fashion, and I'll see you on the next one.